my name is Jupiter Jones and this is Bad Science, where I get a silly amount of junk for a student who should probably be studying, and I try to explain complex scientific ideas as simply as I possibly can. Today we're going to be drinking this one, hashtag not spawns, and then trying to explain string theory. Okay, I will see you when I'm done at least half of this bottle and then I will come back and explain science. Hi. Okay. Hello guys, so I am back. It is roughly an hour later after much Vsauce YouTube and I am down quite a bit. This is my fourth glass. I'm a tiny person so it does not take me a lot to get drunk. So let's talk about string theory. So as you all know, we humans as a species, we're curious AF. We come up with a lot of theories about how things work, but unfortunately for us, theories break down a lot when we change systems. Systems as in like different scales. A little bit of a history lesson, Newtonian physics. This theory breaks down when we like go really really fast, have a lot of gravity, or when we talk about something that is bigger than Earth. Vast expanses. So just like vast expanses, Newtonian classical physics also starts to break down when we get to the really really small. So then we came up with something called quantum theory that holds up on a scale of the very, very small. Pretty much it came to like save the day. So we know that quantum means the very, very small. So let's bring in string theory. So if you've ever, so if you've ever heard of quantum mechanics, quantum theory, you've probably heard it paired with things like uh, particle matter, condensed matter, physics, math, the list really goes on because the string theory that we know and love today, it goes across many categories. There's a broad spectrum. So string theory comes from something called the S matrix theory, which was made, I'm pretty sure, in 1943. 1940 for sure. But it was a viral hit in the 50s where all the scientists were like, Let's do that because we all want Nobel Prizes and it'll be great. It was ultimately abandoned. Something about the protons and neutrons not being cool like the electrons. By cool, I mean they weren't classified as a point like electrons were. So remember when I said something about people being curious at the beginning? Well, it turns out we're also bad insane. <laughs> if you've heard of the LHC, the Large Hydrogen Collider, we pretty much take really small things, smash them together, and we see what happens. Because science, few elementary particles, they're the real smallest things that we know of. Like, smaller than atoms. It's what happens when atoms get broken up. So, how small, you ask? We we can't even see them, but Jupiter, don't we have crazy awesome technology and microscopes to be able to see that stuff? You are correct, random internet person. However, you have to remember that in physics, seeing is interacting. To see something, you need electromagnetic waves. The electromagnetic waves, aka light, bounces off of an object to your eye and you process it in your head and that's how you see something so it's not a passive what's the word i'm thinking of it's not passive it's interactive all right quick example say this wine bottle is an electromagnetic wave and this wine glass is elementary particles since the wave we are using is too big it slips right by the elementary particles so there's nothing to bounce off of to go back to our brains to visualize something. The wave of light is bigger than the thing we're trying to see. This is the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. 
And if that didn't make you uncomfortable enough, just know there's things that are there that we cannot see, we cannot touch, we cannot interact with without changing what they are. But we know that we're they're there. I feel like that was an explanation. Things are there. We know they're there. But we don't know they're there. That was probably also a bad way to put it. Whatever. They're there. So here's where things get difficult. Like, you know my boy gravity is coming to mess up this party. Particles are what make up physical forces in quantum physics. Gravity, however, is not a force. As we know from Einstein, that whole theory of relativity thing. Gravity and quantum physics, they, gravity and quantum physics, they just, they don't get along. They're not friends. Because trying to mix gravity with the quantum world, it just, it wasn't working. We decided to go back to the idea that pretending, like, protons and neutrons were cool like electrons and how electrons are a point in space-time. Space-time is a weird way of putting it. Think of like a three-dimensional us. They're a point. So they're not a probability of being there. They're for sure there. And what's more complex than a point? A line, aka a string. So elementary particles are no longer this thing we can't talk about because we can't see them. Like we put a face to the name. It's a vibration of a string. Because a string can vibrate to give you different particles, it can also vibrate to give you gravity. Think of it like this. If you play a guitar, one string on that guitar can give you many different notes depending on where you're putting pressure on it, I guess. So just like that, a... <sighs> a quantum string, I'm gonna call it because I can't think of the word. A quantum string can give you different vibrations to give you different particles and to incorporate gravity. So yes, gravity and everything else are finally together. Just kidding. But hold up, it's not a happily ever after quite yet because the map doesn't hold up with our dimensions. You need at least, at least 10 dimensions for the math to work with string theory. That's like seven more or six, depending or not whether you're considering, you know, time to be a dimension. So, some crazy smart scientists, you know, they put this idea of string theory together, they put it in a super smart computer with a lot of processing power, and they made a simulation of string theory. And they found the scenarios that work. Once they found the scenarios that did work with the math, they pulled them out of the computer, and they work on them today. But the problem is, they need to boil down the math from 10 dimensions down to our dimensions. Because obviously we don't have 10 dimensions, that'd be crazy. So, we haven't come up with a theory of everything yet. Maybe all it takes is some unconventional thinking. A little bit of bad science. 